Hello, thanks for watching. Today I'm telling you about the 10 Log TL D3 Pro printer, which we have right here. So if you're looking at this printer, most likely it's because you're interested in doing two colors or two materials, and you're interested in the dual extruders. Now, I've tested a number of different setups for dual extruder printers, and trust me, dual independent, this is the way to go. No ooze shields, no prime towers, none of that nonsense of wasting filament, and you get nice dual color or dual material prints. But let me talk about this printer more first. So its build volume is a large 300 by 300, so about a foot by a foot, times 350 high. Um, if you look at uh, the printer itself, it has the everything in the base with a touch screen operating the printer. It comes with uh, what they call a silent board, which is pretty much table stakes in 2020. Um, it means that it uses the uh, TMC2208 drivers, which basically means the stepper drivers are, are silent. Now, if you listen right now, it is completely silent and the printer is on. So what I like right off the bat is that the cooling fans for the electronics and other things like that do shut off when the printer isn't running. The hot end fans also only turn on when it goes above a certain temperature. So if you want to leave this on in the office, it's nice and quiet. Once it gets running, the steppers are silent, but the fans are not. So you will hear the fans. Let's take a look, closer look at the extruders themselves because they're interesting units. So this extruder unit is a somewhat self-contained unit. Uh, when it comes from the factory, it, it's, a, it's just a single piece that you bolt onto the gantry. Uh, and in fact, they do sell replacement pieces. So if something fails, you can replace just the whole thing um, if you're not up for taking it apart and actually troubleshooting it. Um, inside is the actual uh, gear extruder with the stepper on the back. Um, it's actually a single gear, so uh, the older style single gear drive instead of the now more popular uh, dual gear Vontech style. Uh, drive so that is something that they could look into updating in the in the future What I do like is that they put this little light inside so if you peek inside this hole here It's really easy to see uh, w Whether the 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 filament is getting driven properly you can see the gears turning really clearly and and the uh, filament going through um, They've connected everything through this single uh, What looks like a VGA cable actually? Um, so that hookup to this unit is actually really simple uh, what they've also included here is a filament out sensor uh, up here um, that you can't really see near the, just hiding back here. What is kind of strange is that they did leave it just dangling. Uh, there's no physical hardware connection to hold the filament sensor in place. It does work because, you know, once the filament's moving, it does just pull it down and hold it there. Uh, but it it is kind of a little bit of uh, refinement that you know they could have put in um, not a big problem the community has taken care of that there's uh, easily uh, clips that you can print and add uh, to hold that filament sensor in place if you wish although functionally uh, it isn't really an issue another interesting feature they put on this printer is the use of photoelectric sensors for homing instead of the typical micro switches I should point out though that for some reason uh, they use photoelectric sensors for the X and the Z, but not the Y. So on the Y axis, it actually has a standard micro switch on the back. So I'm just going to home it now. And you can see it at work. So with the photoelectric sensors, when it hits a sensor, it just does a little beep. It doesn't actually hit anything except for that Y, which I just mentioned before. Uh, what they also did is put dual Z sensor. So there's one on each side of the gantry. This is a big advantage over uh, many other setups that use a single set uh, micro switch to detect the end stop uh, because then you also have to make sure that your gantry is level. With this, it auto levels every single time. It moves first the left side and then the right side uh, to find the, the end stop on both sides and then puts it into perfect level before starting the print. Okay, so I've talked about the printer. Now you want to know how well it actually prints. This is the first print that I got off the printer, first dual color print. Um, I did tweak some of the Cura settings just based on my experience with dual extruder printers um, because the uh, the profile that it comes with, um, if you download it off the internet, the standard 10 lock 
profile is a bit off, especially on the second extruder. Um, but after I tuned the setting, this is the first one I did. Um, and it came out pretty, pretty well. Um, you can see that there was some droop on the extruder that causes these kind of contamination uh, because of, of um, a dirty uh, nozzle uh, as it comes back into the print. So this is something that, um, you know, some people try to put uh, wipers on the on the nozzles uh, to, to try to do that. There's, um, you know, if you go on Thingy First, people have designed some wipers. Um, what I did was actually, I just tuned some of the, the Cura settings more. Uh, most notably, just increasing the retraction uh, during a nozzle switch. Um, and uh, after tuning the settings a bit more, this is my second uh, test piece, this Panda. And you can look and see that it came out pretty, pretty perfect. Uh, so almost no contamination, no no droop from uh, from the nozzles causing, uh, you know, the, the black dots or something uh, anywhere. Uh, it came out really nice, actually. So this was just the second print of this printer, and and I have to just say I'm I'm really thrilled. Um, you know the printers the prints that came out are, are very good quality, and I haven't even gotten to really really tuning it and and dialing the settings in. So yeah, this printer is definitely more than capable uh, of doing good prints and do good dual color prints. Okay, final thoughts. Should you get this printer? I'd say if you're interested in dual extrusion, this is definitely the way to go. It's an excellent setup with the dual independent extruders. Not only can you do dual color or dual materials easily, but if you want, you can also use the mirror or duplicate modes so that you can print two things at the same time. The printer itself, for the most part, I think is built well with good parts. There are a few rough edges. The cable management up there, not the best, but again, it's not it's not anything that you can't just fix by printing a few parts. I also don't like the glass plate it comes with. I'm all about the flex plates now, and it'd be nice to see if they, that they came with one. Again, you can buy one yourself and put it on, and in fact, I have one sitting on my desk just waiting to go on after I finish this video. So overall, other than a few minor bits and a few, you know, somewhat questionable design things like these loose uh, filament sensors, I think this is an excellent printer, and the results speak for themselves. So if you're interested in a dual extruder printer, just go for this. Don't go for the two-in-ones uh, nozzles or you know the other setups. Dual independent at this price range, totally no-brainer, go for it.